I would like to show you how to build a network model and contingency plan from scratch. What we have on the screen at the moment is a relatively complex plan. The top of the screen here is the network model, and if I scroll down here is the contingency plan. So I want to show you briefly before we get started what is actually behind that. This is the network model, and you can see it's about 10 lines of code. In fact, it's only a few lines at the top that set up the network. Uh, there are some layouts, and then there's a reference to the contingency plan itself. That plan is itself in a separate file, which you can see in this case has got six checks, five repairs, and some layout information. And that's not that, not that much information to provide what is, in effect, quite a complicated plan. So let's start from scratch. Let's open a blank file and uh, let's save that. The location needs to be inside the public library nets directory of uh, the Inmatos tool. I'm going to make a new directory inside here called MyNets and let's call this my test network. It needs to have the word network in it in order to be recognized as a complete network that can be loaded and not just a component that needs to be loaded by a network and it should have the extension .rb. That extension is mostly for uh, our editor so we can get the right color syntax highlighting which is convenient. So I've saved that and I'm going to create an initial state. I've said that I have a state called problems. Let's go back to this view. Now, the what, what we have on the left here is a list of all of the scenarios available. My new one is not yet on the list. Uh, this is one of the few times we need to refresh the entire page. Push F5 and you'll see that on the left here, we now have the directory that I created, MyNets, and this new network in it. If I load that, I get problems. Oh, <laughs> I get the problems node. Notice that if I load it multiple times, it, that uh, sometimes it goes off the screen even here. It will be positioned randomly on the uh, workspace. So what we need to do, of course, is set the layout for that. So we say put the x value to 200 and the y value to 100. That should put it sort of to the left of the middle of the screen. Save that file. Come back here and load it again. Great. What I'm also going to do, at the top here there's a dark light thing. I'm going to toggle it to the light view. I think that looks a little bit nicer. And um, reposition the screen like this. So I can click load many times and it will remain in the same position. Let's say I want to make another state, solutions and position that one as well. I'm going to move it a little bit to the right of those two. So the one is at X position 200 and the other one's at 400. Now having the layout separate from the state definition is uh, not a requirement. You can define it over here with some special syntax, but it's very much nicer once you have a very large network to have the actual topology of the network in one place where you can worry about the logic and the decision logic and connectivity in one place without being cluttered by the layout as a separate question is how to make it look on the screen. So this is actually uh,
quite convenient when you get to large networks. Let's load this. There are the solutions. These two by themselves don't help us much. We need a transition. So let's call that fixing. And put it midway on the X and maybe a little bit further down on the Y. And reload. There it is. Now the terms we've used so far, state and transition, when building this are terms related to colored Petri nets. Because the fundamental model here is a colored Petri net. Another term that you need is arc. And an arc connects the state problems to the transition fixing. And of course, fixing to solutions. So now we have two arcs. One from problems to fixing and one from fixing to solutions. This is now a complete colored Petri net. There is one thing required to actually get this to run and that is to put some tokens into it. So we want tokens to move from problems to solutions. In other words we want to convert problems to solutions. Let's throw a bunch of tokens onto problems. Well, let's start with one. I put one token on problem. There it is. You can see the small yellow dot down there. I will zoom in. So there is the the problem. It's labeled network failure. If I fire this by clicking the occur next button up here, I will cause that transition to fire. Boom. And of course it fires moving the token to the solutions. If I click occur next again nothing can happen. There are no transitions in this network that can fire. Unless I click reset to get it back again. Let's add another one. So now we have two tokens in the beginning and if I fire it, disk failure moves over and then network failure. Reset it, try again. Disk, network, reset, network, disk. See it, it changed order. Basically these two both have the same priority so they can, it's a random selection which one will be uh, taken first. We can control that however by putting a time setting on this. We want the network failure to occur first and then the disk failure. Reload it and you'll see we now have these time settings on it. So network failure will occur first. Boom. And then disk failure. There we go. Now let's also get this transition to modify the token so that it really is a fix. Do a real fix action. This is done by putting labels on the arcs. If I just put something very simple like P on the arcs, you will see I simply get a P there, P there. What that really means is this is a like a variable label. It will be the container for this content that has been passed in there. So inside fixing or on the outgoing arc we can refer to P and uh, operate on it. <coughs> So we could put, for example, put a guard expression on the transition saying P contains the word fail well, Let's actually put the word pass. P contains the word pass because that will not work. I need to reload it here. Now the guard expression on the transition says that the transition can only fire if the incoming token, which we've labeled P, contains the text pass. Let's try fire it. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. So neither of these can pass. 
let's say we wanted to say that only disk can get through. There's the word disk. So now we know that the second one should be able to come through. Bang, just went through. And even though it's at a later time than network failure, it's the only one that it was being considered because it was the only one that could go through. But this is not what we need for this particular example. I wanted to show you this because it's something that can be used. What we really want to see here is what can be done on the outgoing arc to fix it. I'm going to say, I'm going to call a method on the token. We've labeled the token P. I know the tokens are strings coming in because I made them. Strings up here. Network failure is a string. So I can call a string method in Ruby. This entire system is based on Ruby, so we have the full power of Ruby if we want to do fancy things. I'm going to say substitute the word failure for the word repair. Well, let's say fixed. We want network failure changed to network fixed. Disk failure to disk fixed. There we go. Let's go back and have a look at this now. Right, we've taken away the guard expression, that's not relevant to this example. And now you see we will label the token P and then we'll modify P by replacing failure with fixed. Let's see what happens to these two failures. Boom. Network fixed. Let's see the next one. And disk fixed. Okay, so we have now simulated repairing two problems. What we can also do is put uh, time on that. We could say how long it takes to repair. And that could be done by calling another method. The same method we used to set the time in the first place. Let's say they take both these repairs take 10 extra time units to do. Let's load it. There is the more complex expression. Boom. Now look at that. The original time has been incremented by 10. And the next one. That means that these solutions can only go further into the network after a further amount of time. We've actually delayed any subsequent activity that could occur. So this was a very simple PetriNet example. Now I want to move on and show you how we can do the contingency plan.